This ain't your ordinary football show. It's the Old Dominion Football Show with Bruce Rader and Coach Bobby Wilder. Brought to you by Priority Automotive. It is hard to believe the regular season is ready to come to an end. Ten games, nine wins, number four in the nation, a short an invitation to the NCAA playoffs again, but still so much more business to attend to tomorrow. A trip to the Shenandoah Valley, an expected battle against JMU. Why is this game so important? Let's find out. The Old Dominion Football Show starts now. I'm Bruce Rader along with head coach Bobby Wilder. Coach, you still have a lot of football ahead, but is it right. me or has this season just flown by? Wow, you're, you're absolutely right, Bruce. It has absolutely flown by. 104 days ago, we started. We reported to camp. We played 10 games, all those practices, and of course, it feels even better when you're winning, which at 9-1, and one, it feels really good right now. All right, you wrap up the regular season tomorrow with JMU. You beat them in the final seconds last year. Beating right. ODU would make the Duke season, mm -hmm. but really this game could have a big effect on your run to a national championship. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Bruce. This has a feeling of a playoff game. Uh, both teams right now are in contention for the for the CAA title, although we can't be recognized. Uh, James Madison could end up in a tie for the title, and it it's just feels like a playoff game, Bruce, because we know we need to win to improve our position. We have got to win to put ourselves in a better position. James Madison has said publicly they feel like they have to win to get in, so it really is the first round of the playoffs in our mind. And a great rivalry. Mm -hmm. More on JMU a little later. Last week's senior day full of emotion. A beautiful sure day at SB Ballard Stadium and a mm -hmm. 10 point win mm -hmm. against the College of William and Mary. Once right. again, a tale of two halves. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Bruce. That the first half was a shootout. You know, we're, we're trailing 28 27. Both teams at halftime, Bruce, had 270 yards of offense. The biggest difference was our defense in the second half. William and Mary had six drives in the second half and only had three points out of those six drives. So our defense was exceptional. Uh, it felt like we took control offensively in the second half and, and secured that 41-31 win. But what a great college football game. Several bright spots on offense, another outstanding performance by your running back Tyree Lee, right. and no turnovers. <laughs> <laughs> no turnovers. We love that. You mentioned Tyree Lee, exceptional, 170 yards rushing, Bruce, and a touchdown. Also, four catches for 44 yards, so he had 210 yards of total offense. Taylor Heineke was very good, as usual. Uh, Nick Mayers, Bruce, nine, carry, or nine catches, 131 yards, and two touchdowns, so we had some really clutch performances from our clutch players. Well, you mentioned, of course, quarterback Taylor Heineke, certainly one of the favorites for the Walter Payton Award as the top player in the nation. Coach is Taylor, the best college football player in FCS this year. Glad you brought that up, Bruce. Right now, when you look at it statistically, and, and I should mention, Bruce, for those who don't know, the Walter Payton Award is the Heisman Trophy of FCS football, named after one of the all-time greats in Walter Payton. And when you look statistically right now of the finest, Taylor is, is well ahead of everybody. Bruce, he's accounted for 39 touchdowns. He's thrown for 31 touchdowns, rushed for eight. He's got 3,800 yards passing. No quarterback has ever thrown for more than 4,000 yards and not won the Peyton Award, and he's rushed for 400 yards. And the, big, the other big difference, Bruce, with Taylor and the other finalists, because they're all worthy, he's on the number four team in the nation right now who's nine and one. Nobody else is even close to doing all of that. But how much politics are involved in this? That's the big question. In the past, from, from looking at it, and I've researched this because I want to see about the other winners, there hasn't been any politics. It's clearly been the guy with the best statistics is the guy who wins it. Right now, he's got the best statistics, so I feel like he's the favorite to win the Walter Payton. All right, we'll see. Taylor in the offense faces a tough defense mm -hmm. at JMU tomorrow, led by linebacker Stefan Robertson. Right. How good is the Dukes D? Very good, Bruce. Uh, Robinson, you mentioned the linebacker is uh, close to 100 tackles. They're number one in the league in scoring defense, only allowing 19 points a game. We're number one in the league in scoring offense, averaging 45. So something's got to give there. They only give up about 320 yards a game, very good against the pass, similar to William and Murray, so it's going to be a major challenge for us offensively. All right, Coach, the Old Dominion defense, especially the front seven, seems to be improving every week, but it's always the linebackers right. that can make or break things. Tonight, Chris Reckling visits with one of the unsung heroes of the Monarch defense, linebacker John Darr. The Old Dominion defense came up big in the second half against William and Murray, holding the tribe to just three points. 
In the middle of the Monarch defense is linebacker John Darr from Forestville, Maryland. Oh yeah, it's intense, especially taking out pulling guards and you got fullbacks coming at you, double teams guard coming around the corner, you got the fullback coming around the corner as well. So it's a lot of heavy contact all the time. Constant, constant contact all the time. Dar first started playing linebacker in high school and likes the responsibility of being the Monarch's second line of defense. Yeah, when on the linebacker and our defense, we got to know everything. We have to call out where the back's depth is and everything. We got to know the coverage. We got to get the coverage from the safeties and also know our position. We have like a ripper Liz call on each side. It tells me or Craig which side to go to. So we have to also do that as well. And then also um, our middle linebacker, Caleb, he has to check the blitzes depending on the formations and things like that. So it, it's, it's a lot to remember. Dar has excelled this season. He ranks third in the team in tackles and even had an interception against Hampton. Dar is studying sports management, but he hopes to one day take his football talents to the field and be a coach at the high school level. Well, I mean, it's just something that I love, football. I mean, I love football, and that's the path I always wanted to take ever since starting football out and in Little League and everything. I always loved the game, so I thought that was a path for me as a career. In Norfolk, Chris Reckling reporting for the Old Dominion Football Show. Thank you, Chris. You know, Coach, more and more of your opponents are starting to know the name John Dar. <laughs> You're right, Bruce. He's third on our team in tackles, as Chris mentioned, with 60. A couple sacks, an interception, and also very good player for us on special teams. He's having a breakout year this year, Bruce. Special teams always important still mm -hmm. to come. Speaking of defense, <laughs> Eric Saylor has put together quite a year on the defensive line, and he's going to need some of those skills when he joins Ali Lucia on the one-minute drill. Plus, Coach Wilder gives us his priorities of the game for tomorrow's regular season finale at James Madison. Defense's standout Eric Saylor has put together a great senior season and what a better way to go out than going one-on-one -on -one with Ali Lucia on the One Minute Drill. First question, favorite hangout here, here on campus? Favorite hangout, um, we like to go to the district pool. Besides the pool, favorite place to eat on campus? Uh, favorite place, Del Vex. Definitely Del Vex. You got to get the chicken ranch pizza and some garlic knots. Everything's good in there. <laughs> and if you weren't playing football, what would you be doing? If I wasn't playing football, I would like to become a professional hunter. You could date any celebrity. Who would you date? Celebrity. Jennifer Aniston. Didn't you hear she just yeah, got engaged? No, I was heartbroken when I found that out. <laughs> you uh, wanted to see me? <laughs> She's off the market. No, She's never going to look bad, I don't think, ever. <laughs> Okay, all right, give me the mug, I'll keep the mug. <laughs> all right, and uh, if you could star just on, uh, in any movie, who would you, who, who would you, what character would you want to play? I want to play the Hulk, because no matter what, he's just going to freak out on you and just go crazy, and nobody ever seems to stop him. Can you do a Hulk impersonation for us? Uh, I can do a Hulk run, which is kind of funny. Alex Avery showed me how to do one before, but. Okay, yeah, do it. Do the Hulk run? Yeah, do it. <laughs> all right, ready? Yeah. <laughs> Make it out to the game, Old Dominion fans. Thanks for supporting us. Ah, the Hulk. I'll tell you what a great addition to your program. He really has. And, Bruce, what a lot of people don't realize about Eric this year is the fact that uh, due to some injuries and performance, we had to move him from his natural position of defensive tackle out to defensive end. Very unselfish move, and he's been playing very well there. All right, regardless of what happens tomorrow, I know the team has plans to get together on Sunday. More on that as the Old Dominion Football Show continues. All right, regardless of what happens tomorrow, I know that the team has plans to get together on Sunday. It's Selection Sunday. Yeah. Tell us uh, what the fans are invited to and uh, how they can join in on the excitement. Well, you... Your family and all the fans are invited to join us, Bruce, at the uh, Waterside Sheridan right here in Norfolk. Uh, the team will be arriving there around 1 o'clock. Uh, ESPNU's national broadcast of the selection show starts at 1.30. And I hope the fans, Bruce, will come down around 1 so that way we can interact with the fans, the players can, if the fans want to bring their kids, if they want to get autographs, photos, spend some time with the players. Everybody's more than welcome, 1 o'clock at the Sheridan Waterside. But a lot depends on what happens tomorrow. JMU has a good running back in Daquan Scott. We already talked about the defense. Right. This is not a team to be taken lightly. Oh, not at all, Bruce. This is going to be a fabulous football game. Daquan Scott, uh, first team preseason all-conference. He's second in the league in rushing right now. They're averaging 30 points a game on offense. So this is a very good offensive football team. It's going to be a major challenge for our defense. 
All right, now let's turn to the experts. We're going to turn it over to you, the fans, as we head into the coach's corner. And our first question tonight is from Rick in Williamsburg. He says, hey, coach, from the outside looking in, it appears that ODU has avoided the injury bug this year. Is that a fair question? That is a fair question. And, and Rick, you, you never completely avoid it. Unfortunately, our, our starting safety, Devon Simmons, uh, broke his arm in this past game Saturday versus William & Mary. Well, hopefully he'll be back towards the end of the playoffs. But other than Devon, for the most part this season, we've been very fortunate. Thanks for the question. All right, the next question is from Bernard from Newport News. Is there any chance that stadium expansion will be released before the campus master plan comes out in the summer? Well, that really is up to our, our chief operating office, officer, Dave Harnage, and our athletic director, Wood Seelig, on when those plans might come out. Uh, we don't know at this point. They've just started the process, and, and I know there's going to be a very good plan put together. Thanks for the question. That's going to be exciting. Yes, and finally, Dexter from Pocosin asks, what are Old Dominion's chances of playing in a BCS bowl game when you make the move up to Conference USA? Maybe the Monarchs could be the, say, Boise State of the East Coast. I like the sounds of that. And basically right now what's going on is the NCAA is reviewing that bowl championship series process. In 2014, there'll be a four-game tournament for the national championship, but there'll also be bowls. They're looking at adding another bowl that would allow for the conferences that don't get an automatic bid to participate taking the highest ranked team, which we could be, and, and that will definitely be a goal of ours. Thanks for the question. If I can put in my two cents worth, I understand right. there's a bowl game in Honolulu. Okay, <laughs> You're invited. We'll all go to that one. Let's hope we get that one. <laughs> and now it's time for the priorities of the game for tomorrow's contest against James Madison. Coach? The number one thing we've got to do is avoid the early emotional rush. This is going to be a playoff game, 25,000 people. They're going to be excited, control our emotions early and play the football game. Number two, we've got to control their run game. They're going to come out and try to pound the ball similar to what they did last year. Uh, we're going to have to be gap conscious uh, and do a good job early against their run game. And then the third thing is we've got to move the chains on offense. This is the number one scoring defense in the league. Move the chains. That'll lead to points. Those are the priorities for tomorrow's game. All right, it's gone quickly, Coach, yes, but a lot's going to be happening in the right. next two days. One more game before the playoffs is going to be a good one. A sold-out crowd will be looking on tomorrow night when fourth-ranked Old Dominion takes on the James Madison Dukes. You can see the game live on the NBC Sports Network. Then join the team Sunday afternoon for the NCAA Playoff Selection Show at the Sheraton Norfolk Waterside. Good luck, Coach. Thank you, Bruce. Appreciate Fans, it. Fans, we'll Thank be watching on our TV if you didn't get a ticket to the game. And have a great weekend, everybody. We'll see you next week on the Old Dominion Football Code Show.